In a prior screencast, we derived the temperature profile for a fin, assuming that we know the base, the temperature at the base, and we know that the tip itself is adiabatic. In this screencast, I want to talk um, a little bit more about, you know, the whole purpose of the fin is to remove heat from a surface. We want to figure out what QF is, which is the rate at which heat, the fin is pulling heat from the surface in watts. And then I want to talk a little bit about the trade-offs of long fins versus short fins. To begin with, I want to show an example temperature profile in which I've set the temperature of the base to be 100 degrees C, and I've specified the heat transfer coefficient, the diameter, and the thermal conductivity, and set the ambient temperature to 20 degrees C. I'm also showing the results of finite element analysis uh, simulation in which I've set the, the parameters to the same values. And what I'm observing with FEA is that the temperature at the tip at x equals L is about equal to, uh, looks like about 50 degrees, which is congruent with what I observe from theory. The first thing we're after is the rate at which the fin is pulling heat from the base, and that's going to be equal, that rate in watts is going to be equal to the flux evaluated at x equals zero, multiplied by the cross-sectional area. Because the flux depends on the temperature gradient, in this case our temperature gradient at x equals zero, the flux is going to be equal to the conductivity multiplied by the cross-sectional area times the gradient at x equals zero. To figure out our temperature gradient, we'll first differentiate t with respect to x, resulting in this equation. And we need to know the gradient at x equals zero, so in that case, something a little bit simpler. So I'm going to take both sides, multiply by negative k times the cross-sectional area, which gives us an expression for qf, the rate at which the fin is pulling heat from the base. So cleaned up a bit, here's an expression for QF. Let's take a moment to check the units. The thermal conductivity has got units of watts per meter Kelvin. Cross-sectional area is meters squared. M, the fin parameter, has dimensions of 1 over meters. So the meters cancel out. The temperature itself has dimensions of Kelvin, and we're left with units of watts. As an engineer, this is the parameter that you're designing around. You're trying to figure out how much heat is being removed from the object you're trying to keep cool. As an engineer, you might be inclined to say something along the lines of, well, if I increase the length of the fin, I'm increasing the area for convective heat transfer. And when I look at this expression, I increase the length. This term in the denominator will go to zero. This term here would go to zero, and we're left with a relatively large number. But eventually, there's some diminishing returns according to this equation regarding just how much heat you can pull off for a long fin. So now, if we look at this conceptually, note that the hottest part of the fin is near the base, and that's where the majority of the heat transfer is going to occur. The driving force uh, is much higher at the base, so this is much hotter than T infinity near the base, and as we make the fin longer and longer, look at how relatively cool that fin is compared to the surroundings. So it just isn't as much heat transfer occurring near the tip of our fin. Well, let's put that in perspective. So we're going to figure out what, exactly what the maximum amount of heat transfer could be. So we'll, we'll call this Q max. And the max heat transfer that we could get off of a fin would occur is if k went to infinity, the thermal conductivity if it went to infinity. If that was true, the temperature of the entire fin, because it's so conductive, the temperature of the entire fin would be equal to the temperature of the base everywhere along the length of the fin in the limit in which k goes to infinity. It'll never happen, it's not possible, but that's the upper limit with what we're dealing with. We'll call that Q max. So the maximum amount of heat transfer is if we're going to take the heat transfer coefficient and multiply by the exterior area of the fin. So we're going to say H times the perimeter of the fin times its length gives us the outer surface area of our fin itself, and the maximum amount of driving force we could possibly have is if the temperature of the fin was equal to the temperature of the base minus the ambient air temperature. So that's the upper end from what we could expect for heat transfer. Now one thing to keep in mind when we look at this, Q max scales linearly with L. So in theory, we double the length, we're doubling the maximum amount of heat transfer. It's a linear relationship between the two. So now let's define what engineers call the fin's efficiency, which is equal to the actual amount of heat that the fin withdraws from the base divided by the maximum amount of heat that could occur if the material hypothetically had a thermal conductivity that was infinite. So what I've done here is substitute the two equations for QF and QMax, and what we immediately see is that the temperatures fall out of that ratio. And let's also note how we've defined our fin parameter. If I rearrange that K times the cross-sectional area divided by H times the perimeter is equal to 1 over 
m squared. We can use that to further simplify our expression for eta, and we'll substitute that in. In doing so, we're left with this expression, which we can simplify further, and then make a few more algebraic manipulations. The result is that this term on the right-hand side is equal to the hyperbolic tangent of ml divided by ml. And that's a resulting expression for what we'd call the efficiency of a fin with an adiabatic tip. So it's worth exploring qf and qmax graphically. Recall that we said earlier that qmax, the maximum amount of heat transfer that could occur if the fin was at the base temperature everywhere, scaled linearly with the length of the fin. And here I'm plotting qf and qmax as a function of the length of the fin. And this arrow here indicates that the length that we're working with at the moment, which is uh, 100 millimeters or 0.1 meters. So one thing to look at is that for a very short fin, qmax is essentially equal to qf, just a little bit larger. And in this case, we see a fin, we would see a fin efficiency that's right around 100%. However, as we continue making these fins longer and longer, the theoretical maximum, which grows linearly, exceeds that of the actual amount of heat being pulled out from the fin itself. So there's a bit of a diminishing return here. The longer we go with the fin, the less and less on a relative basis the amount of heat that we can pull out of the base. And as you can imagine, the ratio of QF to QMax becomes smaller and smaller as the length of the fin gets longer. And this is indeed what occurs when we plot eta as a function of the length, where again the arrow represents the length that we're dealing with right now. So this fin, as I've shown it, we might say has a thermal efficiency of somewhere around 60% maybe. To get a better understanding of what this efficiency might actually mean, I ran a series of finite element analysis simulations in which I varied the length of the fin from a very short value to a very long value. So what we ought to observe is a very high efficiency for a, a small fin, so meaning most of that fin is being effectively used, to a very low efficiency when we increase the length to 300 millimeters and beyond. So let's start by looking at a fin. Here I'm showing the side view of my simulation. This fin is five millimeters long. So in this diagram, we're looking at a fin efficiency of uh, a very small value, something like right around this location on our graph of efficiency versus length. So a very high efficiency. If we go back to that diagram, it's not a stretch to say that this temperature at that length is about equal to the temperature of the base. Not a bad approximation. Again, still not a bad pro approximation when we come to 20 millimeters or 2 centimeters. 2 centimeters on this diagram being represented by an efficiency still very close to 100%. So as we continue 20 millimeters, 50 millimeters, the temperature becomes a little bit smaller. Here we are at 100 millimeters. It's the same analysis. This temperature again was equal to about 51 degrees C according to the analysis. So here at this point it's not a very reasonable approximation to say that's equal to the temperature of the base. The temperature of the base being 100 degrees. Here we are at a 200 millimeter fin. Now note that the majority of the fin is not being well utilized. The temperature here is starting to look like uh, 20 degrees C. If we go even more extreme to 300 millimeters as we uh, scroll across, the temperature here is very, very close to ambient temperature of 20 degrees C. Real close to T infinity, very little driving force at the end. That part of the fin just isn't doing anything at all. So we come back. If we want to, we could look at a perspective view. It makes it even look, look even more ridiculous. The majority of the fin not doing anything at all because its temperature is so close to the ambient temperature.